Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is day 14 of the Lico Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord if I could click on it. Uh, let me know what you think about today's poem. Binary sub array with sum. Hmm, seems like I haven't done this one before. And we get to do it on this new UI where I will complain a lot as usual. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord and all these good things. Might have already said it, but you know, like, uh, like this UI it is booking, so I don't know. Anyway, all right, what are we doing? So given the binary array sort nums and an integer go, uh, we turn the num of non MT sub array with a sum go. A sub array is a contiguous sum part of array. Oh, okay. I saw a matrix here. That's why I was like, what, what do you mean? Okay. So, okay, so the number of non empty sub arrays with go is equal to two. So you have to do, do, do. Um, Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think there are a couple of ways you can do it. I I think my my intuition, my my initial intuition, to be honest, is going to be sliding window, and I think you could do it, but it's just a little bit um um. You you can make a lot of mistakes with sliding windows with this one. Just from kind of judge, uh, gauging the way that like how you move and stuff like this, uh, and definitely if you want to challenge yourself, definitely should do that. Uh, looking at the constraints, of course, I, I I mean I actually look at the constraints first, but or well, I didn't even look at it. But to be honest, I was just like, okay, well if this is n squared, it's just a dumb question, right? Uh, so I I didn't even really look at it. So I was just assuming that to get to all of n, uh, but but yeah, the way that I would think about it. is i mean there are a couple of ways you can do it to be honest there is um and i'll go over oh let me put, let me get let's put away my eggs uh, all right well x will be not cold sorry friends I am very kind of confused and tired after the gym today. But uh, yeah, so there are a couple of techniques you can do. One is sliding window, possibly. I'm not 100% sold on this one. I wouldn't do it, and I'm not going to do it. Uh, with sliding window, possibly. There's another thing that I, I don't know what the name of this technique is. I just kind of um, uh, the way that I think about it is just um, counting contributions, I think maybe is the way that I count counting contributions. And the way that I do this is um, is just kind of count how many possible. So let's say you have, you know you're going from left to right. You're looking at one digit at a time or number at a time, and you just try to figure out how many times is this the right endpoint or the left endpoint, but from symmetry reason, the right endpoint. How many arrays are there that ends here? So that's basically the the. Subarray is n here, and then of course th there's also prefix sum, which I th I think I'm just going to do a prefix sum. So uh, yeah, uh, and kind of these two tie together for this problem. So uh, yeah, and yeah yeah I'll, I'll go with the prefix sum. I think this is a question that I got a couple of times on the 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 linked list problem uh, a couple of days ago, the one that I really struggled on. And for that one, I was, uh, to be honest, just too tired to really explain it. And that was my apologies. I mean, that took like an hour. So I uh, hope, you know, you understand. Uh, I was just like, uh, that one was really weird in a way. And I was just wrong, to be honest, with that problem. I, it kind of, I don't know, it is what it is. But yeah, um, but yeah, the idea here is that, okay, let's, let's calculate the prefix sum. What is prefix sum? Prefix sum is just having an array that contains all the elements from zero to the ith index, right? So we can write something like this. Um, but actually, let me take out drawing real quick. But yeah, let me draw real quick. Um, hang on. <laughs> also, I'm, like New York is like warm the last couple of days, uh, and it is springtime, so. Allergy season is my point, and it's a little bit uh, funky. 
But yeah, uh, I mean, you could skip ahead a little bit if you already know what prefix sum is, but, and this is a binary array, so that makes it a little bit easier to kind of illustrate. I'm just writing random things. Um, and then the prefix sum, of course, is just, you know, let's say we start with zero because you have zero elements, right? This is the no element. And then zero, one, one, two, three, three, four, four, right? So then now the, what, what the prefix sum means that uh, for this index, it gets the sum of all these elements, right? But this index, it gets all the sum of all these elements, right? And then the idea here is, let's say we're, we're at this element. Let me change the color real quick, right? And then now, what does that mean? That means that, okay, we're trying to find um, some subarray in which, let's say, for, I don't know, k is equal to 2 or whatever the variable name is, right? We're trying to find the go is equal to 2. What does that mean? That means that, um, that means that this subarray, so mm, let's call it, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that, that's p sub 6, right? Let's say p sub 6. Right. Let me write it a little bit up. So p sub six is equal to I don't know what's a a sub zero plus a sub one plus a sub two plus a sub three plus a sub four plus a sub five plus a sub six. Say right. And here we're trying to figure out. Okay, we were trying to end here. Then that means that. We have some change color again. We're trying to find some subset or subarray or here, either here or something like this. Some, some, and we don't know which, how many or which one uh, is equal to g sums to go, right? So then now, you, another way to write that is that you know, uh, well, let's say let's say we figured out that. Um, a2 to A6 is equal to go. What does that mean? Another way to write the rest of this, of course, is just that this is, of course, P sub 1, right? Because, well, that's just the prefix sum. So then now you could write P of X plus P sub 1 plus the go, right? I'll write G for go. And th that's pretty much the idea is that now you're trying to find how many prefix sum is so then now uh and then maybe you could rewrite this as some uh variable p sub x for some number of x's or maybe i i don't know right and then now you know what go is because it's in the input you know what p sub six is because that's what you you're calculating so then now you have i'm gonna write it up here in a confusing way g is you go to uh sorry g uh, minus p6 is equal to some p sub x and then now we try to figure out how many times this is true right and that's pretty much the idea for this one for prefix sum and it's, it ties very much into um, the linked list problem that I didn't go over so hopefully this is a makeup for that but yeah so doo -doo -doo -doo, and then for x and nums um, and then maybe a, a F for frequency, right? And then now, um, yeah, prefix dot append the the last number plus x. So this is just keeps on going, you know. And then F of prefix, make, this is the new number, of course. So don't confuse these two. Uh, we increment by one, but before that. Before that, um, and maybe even before this, I guess it doesn't matter. Before that, now we have, so um, prefix, the new one, the new uh, last prefix sum that we calculated, maybe I could write this in a cleaner way. I think mean, this is very confusing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So then maybe like the new one, so I'm just going to last, is you go to this. Right, da, 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 da. and then this is still you go to last. Okay, so then now, um, yeah, so last, 
minus some pref some previous prefix sum is equal to go, right? So then now we add previous on this side. Uh, uh, yeah. Hmm. Or uh, minus last. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is right. Right. So minus go on this side. Uh, plus, I don't know how, I think I might have had it wrong before, that's why. And then, yeah, so then now this is what we're looking for. And then, and that's just going to be an F of this thing. So then now count, we can just count the number of times we've seen it before. Um, in theory, if you really want to uh, kind of shake it out, you could keep track, you could make this like a, a list or something, keep track of the indexes, and then kind of uh, visualize your, your way through it. But, uh, but yeah. Should be good. Where's the submit button? Oh, it's up here. I uh, this new UI. And now we get to see my code twice for some reason. Except we have to click on read more. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> and turns out, oh yeah. And I guess like it turns out you don't even really need this, right? Because <clears throat> I just kind of have to prefix some here for visualization. But really, you could, you know. You can see that we don't use any of the numbers except for the last number, and we updated here. I just want to uh, put the prefix sum for visualization. But uh, yeah, this is a linear loop. This is linear space. This is also linear space, but you could get rid of that one. But in either case, it's linear time, linear space, and that's all we have for this one. Let me know what you think. Uh, did, did this have to solve? I don't remember if I solved it. This, I don't remember if I've solved this before, to be honest. Uh, but no, oh well, because I don't. This new UI. Uh. But uh, but yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. And yeah, if you think about the linked list from uh, from a couple of days ago, this is basically the same idea, um, except for that now uh, the goal here would have been zero. So then that's why you know it's structured that way. Um, yeah, uh, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Stay good. Stay healthy. To good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.